Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so it's still summertime. I know we have fall creeping in just around the corner. Can't wait, but I have a few more sunny beach paintings for us to round out the season. And this week I have a painting of a beach sign. Uh, and it's gonna be really fun, super simple. We'll break it down step by step. I have my four standard brushes that I use in most classes. I get these brushes in a kit that comes with four sizes. That comes with a square brush medium-sized wash brush, and two small detail brushes. I'm gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. It'll take you to a materials page on my website that shows you all the brands and everything that I recommend. To get started today with the background step, I'm just getting started with some white, fair amount of white there, some cobalt blue, a little bit of phthalo green, some cadmium yellow, and a little bit of my warm burnt sienna brown. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, let's go ahead and grab our medium-sized brush here to start. And I'm going to use this guy to create a horizon line with a gorgeous light blue. And I'm going to cut my canvas pretty much in half. I'm gonna go a little bit further up than halfway just to make things a little more interesting. And I got a little bit wonky there. So I'm gonna go across a few times, try to get as straight of a line as I can. Right. Great. And then this is going to now separate our two parts here of the background. So we're going to have our sky up here and our beach down here. And why don't we take that light blue? We'll take a little bit of a diagonal line there for the shoreline at the bottom. And we have three of our main spaces all blocked out. I'm gonna grab my biggest brush now, and we're just going to now fill these areas in from the top down. And I'm going to mix up a light sky blue to start up here in our sky, a little bit of water always added into my paint here, my palette paper, so that it goes nice and smooth and soaks into the canvas texture, okay? And I'm just going back and forth, super simple with my big brush and I'm going to go all the way down to meet my first horizon line. And we're going to cover that line with our light blue so that we make sure it's the right light sky blue color. Okay. Just getting that all filled in. And then if you'd like to add a little bit more depth to the sky, you can have a little bit of a gradation here as well. And the way that I'm going to do that, since it's really subtle, super simple, is just grab a little bit more of my blue and darken the top a little bit. Just for a little bit of depth. Just some more color saturation with that cobalt. Smooth, long brush strokes going all the way off the page. Right. Looking good. I'm gonna grab my medium brush now. I'm tired my big one into my water cup. And I'm going to mix up my ocean color now. I'm going to use some of my beautiful phthalo green to make a ocean tropical blue. So I have just blue, white, and that beautiful phthalo teal. And I'm going to now take 
this saturated version of this color across my horizon line right to touch the sky. Okay, nice seamless transition there. No white canvas peekabooing through. Great. And then we're going to start to fill in our ocean area, but we're going to start with horizontal lines and then we're going to move our brush strokes slowly more diagonal as we get to the shoreline. So this first sort of triangular area here, we're gonna fill in with this gorgeous saturated teal blue color. A little bit of color variation is nice. If you have some areas that are a little bit greener or some areas that are a little bit bluer, just go ahead and work with that. All right, and as I'm moving there towards my shoreline, I'm going to start adding some white. And we'll go a little lighter. And blend our slightly lighter teal into the darker one and then take it one more step. Lighter. And then we're getting pretty close to our shoreline so I want to have pretty much white once I get there. Pretty. And I'm going to rinse my brush because I want to add as clean of white as I can. We'll probably still have it be a little bit blue, that's okay. But cover that sketch line right along the shoreline, blending it to the lightest blue possible, covering that initial sketch line that we had underneath. And then I'm going to just kind of blend that into my lighter blue. And then I'm going to grab my white for a little bit of wet on wet blending and I'm going to add some streaky waves just gently right along that same diagonal. And kind of play around with this. Some nice white waves coming in and if you go a little too heavy handed you can grab your Teal again, tone things down a little bit, and it's really just a few brush strokes. Just kind of want the illusion of waves there. That's looking good. I'm going to rinse my brush now completely and mix up my sand color. So that's going to be mostly white here with some of my warm brown and some yellow. And you get to mix up what, uh, whatever sand color you like in your imagination. In my imagination today, we are in perhaps the Caribbean. Like Jamaica was kind of my uh, inspiration for the colors of the sign, which we'll get into later. With the Rastafari flag, rather. The Jamaican colors are black, yellow, and green, but I did red, gold, and green. Like the song about that, because <laughs> I couldn't get out of my head. And those are the colors of the Rastafarian flag. So we're in Jamaica in my mind today. And once I get that little strip of land filled in, Gonna add a little bit of streaky white here closer towards the corner, and then a little bit of a darker brown here by the shoreline just to imply a little bit of wet sand. Super quick little beach scene. Our final little step here with the background before we let this layer dry. Gonna take that same medium sized brush 
and put in some quick little squiggly clouds. And I just kind of layer some scruffy brush strokes on top of each other. They look like a little mountain range to me. And then to make it look like a thunderhead, I do some straight lines here at the bottom. Very light and pressure with your brush there. And then I'll do another little guy over here. Very common to have monsoons, of course, in these tropical locales. So we've got to have some monsoon clouds. Storms of Bruin. Widest there at the sort of peaks. And then just a few streaky brush strokes. We just want to have our lovely little day. Okay, cute. <laughs> Let's go ahead and let this layer dry and then when we come back we'll add our sign and our last little details to finish up the beach behind it as well. I'll see everyone in a few. All right, welcome back artists. We have a dry background layer and I got some fresh colors and a new piece of palette paper here. So I have some more white, some more of my burnt sienna brown and a little bit of black. And then I have the colors that I'm going to use for my signs, which you could do any colors that you like, but I have some cadmium red, some cadmium yellow and a little bit more of my phthalo green. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back on into things. I rinsed my brushes got some fresh water at break as well. Going to jump back in now with my medium sized brush and we are going to add our post for the sign. Very important. And I'm going to mix up a sort of neutral medium brown color with brown and white and a little pinch of black. Not too much though. Just for a nice little toned down version of medium brown okay and I'm going to take this post right dead center and I'm going to go up fairly high with it too and I think I'll just do one straight ish line to start and then I'm going to come back and thicken things up a little bit In my mind, this is like a round wooden post, like a tree trunk, made from a tree trunk. And we're just going to fill that in with our base color brown. Make a nice thick tree trunk post. thicker at the bottom but pretty much the same size throughout since it's not a tree it's been milled okay and I'm going to grab a little bit of a lighter version of that color I'm going to come right down the center with a little streak just to add a little bit of sort of greediness to it Okay, and then I'm going to grab my smaller brush, one size down here, so my second to smallest detail brush. And we're going to add some highlights and some shadows now into our post. I'm going to grab a darker version of that base color. So this is just mostly brown with a little bit of black. And I made it over here and where I had my brown with white so there's a little bit of white in that too and around the top part here I'm gonna do a little half circle accentuate that round shape and we're doing this on wet paint so it's blending a little bit which is good when you're working with like colors like this that's a nice way to add that just additional little bit of blending without working too hard having to do any kind of intermediary colors all right bringing that down the side there to sort of accentuate 
our shape and make it nice and bold and visible on our background. And then I'm just bringing that shadow down the other side. Very light pressure with my brush. You don't want it too stripy. So you may need to blend it a little bit with some of the base brown so that we get that round shape it's a little bit more than we have the stripiness. Okay, and then I'm going to gra grab that same color. I think I'm going to go even a pinch darker. For the darkest shadow color here and we're going to add a little bit of wood texture with it. I like to start with a sort of long U and then you can do a little line in the middle and you get like the knot in the tree that the post is made from and then you can do a few more lines around it for the rings of the tree. And then I'll do a few just straight up and down lines just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna do another little curve line up top. And one going the other direction too. And it doesn't matter that it look exactly like mine, more that you just add this wood texture onto it. And then same idea, we're going to take a highlight color now. And I just had a clean brush and I'm going to come in here and add a few little highlights in those little wood shapes that we created. So now we have lots of different brown colors and we have just a much more realistic looking post than before. And we'll do a quick little highlight here in the top. And some up and down lines as well. Kind of everywhere that we took those shadow lines. We'll take our highlight too. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Let's let that dry now. And I'm going to finish up the last little final details on my background. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and just make sure I have a nice clean white here where my shoreline touches the shore. If you need to, nice little frothy shoreline, very important to me. Right, very cute. And you can even brighten up any white that you'd like in your waves. My little initial streaky lines kind of defined where my waves would be. So now I can kind of come in here with my white and accentuate them a little further. Right. And you can do the same thing to any clouds that you might want to accentuate as well with that clean white as well. Little finishing touches for our background. It's nice to have a different texture too, but I'm doing the same sort of scribbly brush strokes and sort of accentuating the tops and just adding a little bit more depth with brighter white. And that's a very subtle step. And then if you'd like to, you can also add cute little birds, kind of anywhere that you'd like, but you flying into the horizon to decide. <laughs> I think I'll do them over here. 
Um, they're just sort of like flat ends. And I just put one on top of the other. All right, and then I wanna add my beach signs, but I'm a little bit wet still with my post. So let's just give this five more minutes and then we'll add our nice bright colors so that we don't blend with our brown and mess anything up there, okay? Just a minute, I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry post here. We're gonna finish things off with the most important part, our signs. So I'm gonna grab my second to smallest size brush again. And I'm actually going to just start with white to block out my signs here. And you can start really with any of them, but I think I'll go ahead and start up top. And I'm going to do a slightly angled horizontal line. And depending on where you put your first line, you're either gonna go up or down from there. I went pretty high up. So I'm gonna do a parallel line below it. And we're gonna start small. That way we can adjust things a little bit bigger and sort of finesse things along the way. And I'm going to make it now a little bit wider and a little bit longer. Keeping in mind that I want to try to fit three signs on my post today. And I'm just going to be blocking out that shape for now with the white. I'm just getting that filled in. All clean lines. And then this side is going to be the side that points. So I'll have that come to a little triangle. Okay. It looks like I went a little wide here, with the pointy end. So I'm gonna take this out a tiny bit more to make up for it. and fatten it up a tiny bit more too. All right, sign number one blocked out. I'm going to do the same thing now, only go in the other direction and I'm just going to have a slightly down angled line this next time. And this time, this left side is gonna be the pointy side. And then we're just gonna fill that in with white as well. Our bright colors are gonna show up much better on white than they would by themselves. We would have to probably do three layers at least, and then it would still be showing the background colors. <laughs> so this seems time consuming, but I promise it is actually time saving. Okay. Looking Pretty good. And then moving along to our last one. And for this guy, I'm gonna do like a kind of a straight line. Just to mix it up and make them all different. Then I'm going to have this right hand side be my pointy direction over here and I'm finishing on white so it's a little hard to see. But I'm just getting that all blocked out in the same way. And once we add our bright colors, 
we will be able to see that easy peasy no problem all right and since we've went from the top down here my white is pretty tacky dry up there so i'm going to go ahead and start filling them in with my bright colors and on the top i'm going to go with Let's do green. So I'm going to do green mixed with yellow for a nice, grassy, bright, shiny, lovely green. We're just going to add our bright colors right on top of our first white layer. If you need a second to dry, you might need to step away for a second too let this layer dry if you need to it's so hot today the paint is drying as i speak <laughs> just i think it's the hottest day of the year and although i have air conditioning i turn it off because it's very loud So it's hot in here. Okay, but it's okay. It's reviving. There's cooler temperatures in the forecast. And in my mind, we're in Jamaica today anyway. So. Okay, nice bright green color. A little bit of variation is good. And it blended slightly with my white, and that's okay. I'm gonna take a little bit more dark green in there, though. So I don't want it too pastel, but I like that. Okay, and I think I'll go ahead and do just yellow here for the middle one. Beautiful, sunny, bright yellow. And now you can see that we're actually getting good coverage. Yellow especially does not have very good coverage power, so it would be very hard to cover our blue background. And if you go over a little bit from your edge, you'll see what I mean, because it will look a little bit green. Because you have the yellow on top of the blue. And yellow plus blue equals green. Okay, very nice and clean. And then I'm going to do red for my final. If you would like to learn more about color theory, how to mix colors and also about tints, tones, and shades. I have a course on color theory available on Skillshare and there is a link below if you'd like to go check that out. There's a free month for all of my students if you sign up through that link as well. So you can actually check that course out for free, learn all about colors, and it's a good refresher in case you haven't had color theory since grade school or ever. It's good foundational information for all painters and all mediums even. But it's done with acrylics, which is the most popular amongst my students. Okay, and now we have a nice clean red shape here, covering those white lines. Very nice. 
All right, and once we're all filled in, now we just have to add our little words. And you have to decide what words you want yours to say. I'm going to go with the words to town, swimming, and cabanas, because those are long words. Um, and they'll fit my somewhat long signs here that I wanted to do just because it looked nice with my composition here. Um, but you really could do any words that you like. I did a painting a few weeks ago of a little row of cute colorful cabanas. So I figured I'd add cabanas onto <laughs> this sign and sort of continue on creating my own little fantasy world there. Um, but I'm going to start up top again, and I'm going to start with black. And black should have enough coverage power to get nice, clean letters on top of wet paint. But again, don't feel like you need to absolutely apply the letters onto wet paint. If that's hard for you, you can let it dry for a little bit too. So to town, it's my first letters and I'm just winging it here with free hand and I'm going all caps. T O W N And I find it easier to kind of write out the word first and keep things everything the same height as best as I can and then come back and darken things up a little bit. So and then I thought swimming this direction like maybe you know this area is better for surfing or has some rocks or whatever. So swimming beach S W I and then two M's I gotta keep things sort of small so that I have enough space. Just barely made it. <laughs> and like I said, I thought about these words first so that they should hopefully fit pretty easily and also be almost the same size. Cute. Looking good. And then cabanas. It's a little bit of a shorter word. C A B A N A S. Cabanas. Very cute. And then once we get our letters all added, let that black dry for a second. And we're going to outline our signs as well. That black as well. And feel free to use a smaller brush if you would prefer. I'm going to wing it with my medium sized or second to smallest, small medium. All right, and that kind of makes everything look a little more whimsical. And just really brings out those shapes. I 
and as I outline and kind of finesse things as well so like my words got pretty low down here so I'm taking my line a little bit further out further down rather than cheating in a little bit so every step I'm always sort of trying to correct things add any more details that might need it clean things up and even things out as well so like with this guy I am going on top of the red here to bring that line a little bit further down it's all in the details okay nice and clean and cute like it all right I'm gonna add a little bit more black behind here on my post okay and then I think I'll grab my smallest little tiny detail brush and I'm gonna do a little kind of graphic design trick here uh, where you bring some white in next to your black and that should make things really nice and visible it's almost like a little bit of a reverse shadow and like highlight one side there and in my mind it's also like maybe these letters were carved in so you can see a little bit of a highlight of the sun i'm just highlighting one side one side of each letter all right and try not to cover too much of your black so you want to be able to see both the black and the white next to each other okay just a little highlight on each letter just on one side It doesn't even necessarily have to be the same side. Kind of mixing it up with each letter and it's working just fine. And that one got a little close to my black, so I think I'm actually going to grab my black and just finesse that a little bit, to do a little quick correction and rather than it blending to gray i'm wanting it again to be black next to white swimming cabanas and then to town maybe you gotta get some supplies Good chance to refine all those letters to make things as clean and clear as we can. Cabanas. And I'm just copying what I did before. with my multiple A's in this word. Right there. And 
then along one side. Cabanas. Okay, and a little bit more black here just to finish up a few of these. Make them nice and clean. All right, I think that looks really cute though. I'd love to know what you thought of today's painting and let me know in the comments section down below. I'd also love to see your work and I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can join us and share your work, whether it be from painting along with me or just from your own imagination and studio. I wanna see what you've got going on, what you're painting. Uh, again, there's a link below. It's a free to join Facebook group. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So I hope you had fun painting along and until next time, stay creative. Thank you.